Today I'm going to share how to create these barn doors. Visit Two Feet First to get the list of materials used for this project. Start by cutting four two by sixes to the length of your door. The boards then need to be marked for where the dados will be placed. These dados are so that the glass and the ship flap can be inserted. You can find the exact measurements or I do offer plans of these doors on my website. There is a link below. Use a square to make a mark all the way across the board to make it easier to find the middle of the board in just a little bit. I am using this one by two as a guide to help me know exactly where the middle of each dado is. As you can see, I have marked a three quarters inch and a quarter inch to know exactly where they need to be placed. Because I only have a hand router, I do have to pre-drill holes for my router to go into. So if you have a routing table or the plunger, you probably can skip this step. Then using my guide, I have also created a depth guide for my router bit. This will allow each dado to be the exact same depth. As you can see, I have now inserted my bit into my pre-drilled hole and now I'm creating my dado. I then created all the rest of the dados for the four side pieces. There are two sizes of dados on this store. There's a quarter inch for the glass and three quarters inch for the shiplap. So right here, I am creating the three quarter inch dado. As you can tell, there's lots of dados on these boards. Right here, I'm creating the dados for the panels. And I think you understand that there's dados, so let's skip ahead to the next step. The next step is cutting down the two by six pieces to size. These are the panel pieces, so it's the top panel, middle panel, and bottom panel. And you want these pieces to be the exact same size. So you use one of the pieces as a guide to give you the exact measurements, then check your fit. After the panel pieces are cut, they need to add a pocket to them. This is to attach them to the side pieces. The next step is cutting the ship flap to size. This will be the section that fits inside the dados that were three and a quarter inch. 
The doors I'm creating are for a four foot opening. So for two doors, you'll need six of these pieces. The shiplap pieces were a little large once they were all placed together for my door, so I did have to cut the ends down just a little bit. A table saw would have been easier, but I didn't have one at the time, so I did just use a jigsaw to cut them down. Once all the boards are cut to size, it's time to sand all the wood. Now it's time to assemble the doors. Place one of the side pieces on a flat surface. Then position the panel pieces where they should go. This would mean that the dados are lined up and that the pocket holes are facing up. Place some glue on the one side of a panel piece, then square it up to the end. Attach using screws. It would help to clamp these together, but I didn't have clamps that were long enough. Now it's time to insert the shiplap. Place glue inside the dados, then slide the shiplap pieces into the dados. Next, apply a silicone or caulk adhesive into the quarter inch groups. This is to secure the glass into place. Carefully place the glass into the groove. It would be ideal to wear gloves. And also make sure that you don't let the glass fall. Now it's time to install the last side piece. Place glue where the panel pieces will be and also the data where the ship lap is inserted. Then apply caulk or silicone adhesive to the one quarter inch data where the glass is. Place the side piece against the edge where the panel pieces will be and secure into place with clamps if you have them. Then secure with screws. As you can see, I had to get creative with my clamps to make sure everything lined up correctly. Or as you can tell, I had to unscrew the one side to attach the other side. Longer clamps are very useful in this project. After everything is assembled, fill in the pocket holes with pocket plugs and then allow the glue to fully cure. Now it's time to add a groove at the bottom of the door. This groove is for a track that makes sure that the bottom of the door doesn't swing out. Now re-sand the areas where glue was applied. This is to make sure that you have no funny residue left over. Now it's time to apply your finish to the door. I am choosing to stain my door. And I also like to use a damp cloth to wipe down the door to remove any dust, but also I use this as my conditioner before stain. To apply stain into the grooves, I used a painter's tool to insert into the groove with the cloth around it. Now 
Then follow the instructions on your sliding door hardware to secure the doors into place. 